what inspires you to create a beautiful plate of food? The perfect visual. It depends on shape, size, texture. Height's really important. The dishes are designed it's, so it, it all gets you going. It comes a heck of a lot back to confidence. The plates that I will create far more simplistic with less ingredients on them than maybe I was doing 10 years ago. Look brilliant and that's enough. Now that'd be great for eating, yeah. but visually maybe not so much. Guarantee you a chef wants you to try all of it mm. together because they, they might be balancing stuff with sweet and sour and salty, sugary, all those things that you need to get your taste buds flowing. What I really wanted to get from you is, obviously your food tastes great, I can attest to that. What makes or what inspires you to create a beautiful plate of food? It's a difficult question. Yeah. And it, how many layers can you go into? Probably quite a lot. Yeah. But, but to, to start with, you've got to be really, really comfortable and proud of the ingredients that you start with, mm -hmm. I think. And then when you strip that back down, you then, you're then thinking about how do I want this to look to the customer and what can I afford? in terms of crockery. Oh, interesting. Crockery. Okay, so the plate. Absolutely. And I'm yeah. Forks. yeah, I mean, that's your canvas, I suppose. Yeah. It's foundation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I've always been very key. I've been very lucky throughout my career to work with fantastic front of house team. I very much see my job as putting the food onto the plate. Mm. And when it goes out of the kitchen, that's it. Okay. That's it. And we will talk them through and influence them as much as we can with our passion so that they care about it as much as we do. Food styles change. Mm -hmm. I love modern influences. I was loving modern influences 20 years ago when I started. It develops as you go, as you, as you go through your career. I think you put less on the plate the longer you've been cooking. Is that con due to confidence? Us, yes. Okay. Due to confidence. I think you look at influences and you are more influenced mm the less experienced you are, definitely. Yeah. I suppose in essence, to start with, we're probably looking at those elements of carbohydrate, vegetable, protein, source in a very simplistic way. Do you know what I mean? Have I got those elements on my plate and can I make them look fairly neat okay. and tidy? So we talked about the plate, the foundation. Let's go back to how you yeah. design. I mean, do you, go, do you go into the details of actually drawing something out? Do you sketch something? Do you work? How do you work on the balance of what? So I would say there have been times when I've been able to allow myself the time to do that. Okay. So concepts, essentially. Mm. What are the concepts of dishes? What are you thinking about doing? I've actually done a little bit of that here in the current environment because we're not a day-to-day -day restaurant. Yep. But we are trying to plan for that and we're thinking about whether we might be able to do that. So mm. if I come up with something or we've made something for a one-off and I think actually that's that's really good or yep. that's a good combination of food, mm. that'll get scribbled down and maybe this is how we can plate it. Over time and working in different environments, that's allowed me to understand food shapes, food styles. Yep. And that influences how you put things onto plates. Mm. For me, I always start with whatever shape that plate is. I will always go to the middle of that plate as a start mm -hmm. point. Doesn't necessarily mean something will something physical will be in that middle point, but naturally your eye is drawn to the middle of something. Yep. You don't look at a you don't look at a you know a piece of art and mm. in the top right hand corner and go, well, that's really interesting. Yeah. Up in the top right hand corner, you look right yeah. in the middle, and it's exactly the same with a plate of food especially if you're on a circle plate yeah. because naturally you're, you can see that shape and you go to the middle. So if you've got a big pile of something and then you bring some height in over to one side, mm. personally, I always think that looks a little odd. I, could, I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. I did a shoot not that long ago with a brilliant chef, beautiful looking food. And, and I don't know whether it's a photographer's side, but it's funny that you say it as well. A lot of it was positioned off center and and it just, there was just something about it that didn't look quite right. A bit unnatural. It was unbalanced. There aren't that many things that are abstract. No. I'm not saying there's not a place for abstract. Yeah. And there are some very, very talented chefs yeah. that create, create fantastic, messy looking food. Yes. The trick, the trick for me is they've been doing it for a long, <laughs> long, long time. Yeah. And they understand how to draw your, in, your interest yeah. through color, height. It's the, it's the thing with photography. You've got to understand the rules to break the rules, right? Yes. And I think that's exactly. very true. You can't just kind of get lucky. You right. know, you've got to know what you're doing. You're absolutely right. Years of experience. I think that's possibly a slight downfall of the Instagram. Yeah. In people will look at high-end guys. You know, the, the guys that have really got time to think about their plating are the guys that are in two-star, three-star kitchens yeah. and can afford mm -hmm. the time yeah. to spend thinking about plate design. Yes, I've drawn that dish up. I, I, 
I remember looking at this sat posted on Instagram one, you know, little, it's got a little scrapbook and there's little pictures of yeah. fish and we're, we're going to come up with this one. And then, and it was in concept two and a half years ago. And then he takes a picture yeah. of it because they've worked it through and, you know, not that many environments can help with that. And, and it's a, it's a problem for maybe less experienced chefs because they're like, I want to make my food look like that. Yeah. And then when they do, it's a car crash. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed diving into the world of professional plating with Chef Nick Gaylor and that you found his insights into the visual world of plating as eye-opening and inspirational as I did. Then it would be amazing if you could give this video a comment, a like, or even subscribe to the channel. Now your ideas and questions matter. So if you've got a secret plating tip you'd like to share or a burning question for our next chef, drop them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do next time. So who knows, maybe it'd be your curiosity that sparks the next brilliant conversation with one of our chefs. Now let's dive in back to the video. So start with the plate. Yep. Then we've talked a bit about balance. Where does your brain go next sort of? Yeah, so so as I said, most things are drawn to the center. It doesn't necessarily mean something's gonna go directly into the center of the plate. Balance definitely needs to be there. And I always like to leave, I always like to not fill right to the edge of the plate. Mm -hmm. We've done dishes where it's been a little bit more messy, but I'm still starting in the center. Yep. I'll think about the main elements of the dish. So if you have got something that's potato -y based and it's a, it's a larger physical element that's going to be going onto the plate, you've got to be careful about where that's going to go. Mm. And then how the rest of the components match up. I like to see the components on my tray, prepped, cooked, ready, mm -hmm. sitting, resting, ready for me to put on the plate. I like to have a quick look at it before I then transfer that onto there, even if I've done it a hundred times. Yep. Um, because it will generally be different. What's fascinating with plating is how I see something mm. is completely different to one of my other guys or girls. Yep. And again, experience has taught me that I have to be careful mm. about how we plate. And if I make it too tricky mm. and I can do it, mm. if the next person can't do it and I'm asking them to plate because I'm helping somewhere else or I'm not in the kitchen, yep. then the food is not the same as it was before. And that's only a downward spiral for me. You, mm. The food has got to be the same. In terms of the general makeup mm. of, of a dish, if you've got some lovely vegetables and some protein, and then most things usually have a sauce, we split a lot of sauces these days with oils and flavored oils to mm. give a really interesting visual. Some dishes we will completely finish. Mm. Some dishes we know that we want that the, the perfect visual. I don't want it, the perfect visual in front of me. I want the front of the house team to do that with the customers. So the sources will come in the jug and they'll pour at the table. Table um, course, yeah. Yeah, so that so there's a differentiation there between between finishing plating and, and what happens at the end. In terms of design, it really does depend on what you're cooking. Mm. It depends on shape, yep. size, texture, whether you want any height. Height's really important in plating food. If you're plating into a bowl, in particular, do you want everything to be down very flat in the yeah. base of a bowl? Probably not. And in a nice bowl mm. to build food up so that you've yep. got some height off of it. Yep. Well, that if you're going to build food that's got a heart, got height, you've got to have the a dish that's capable of doing that. You don't want to be squashing everything <laughs> that's in the bottom. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so so it varies depending on on what you're what you're what you're cooking, what you're yeah. plating. I always think height's so important. Again, from a photography angle, it just looks impressive. Absolutely. And I think, you know, as a non-chef, it just technically looks harder. Do you know what I mean? Yes. When I try and do something like that at home, it falls down, it topples, because I haven't probably done the basics of, like you just said, um, building from the bottom, you know, bottom. all that yeah, yeah. stuff, you know. So it's it's one of those things that I always think looks really impressive. Yeah. So I like to see it. Yeah, I mean, and it, I think it, it comes a heck of a lot back to confidence. Yes. Interesting. A lot of plates now... in. My, the plates that I will create now, I would say are probably far more simplistic with less ingredients mm. on them than maybe I was doing 10 years ago. Okay. Maybe. Um, it'd be interesting to see that old picture. Because <laughs> I do flick back through some of them yeah. sometimes and think, oh yeah, that was quite a good dish, wasn't yeah. it? But then a good dish to me mm. is not necessarily a good dish in terms of selling or for the customer. Yep. Um, you can go out to places and I can pick through a menu and think, oh, that's a sh that's a chefy thing. I'm having the chefy thing, mm. you know, and you'll go out with a group of people and I'll be like, I bet the rest of them don't order that. But you can pick out some mm. of the chefy things. Obviously, I want to eat the chefy things, yeah. the nice things. But yeah, interesting, the, the interesting how different people perceive visuals. Yeah. Well, I think that comes down to it being an art form, doesn't it? You know, that people yeah. do, it's subjective. People have different opinions. It's fascinating what you say about confidence. And less is more. That that really interests me. You know that you just have more confidence that you can that you what you're doing is the best. It looks brilliant, and that's enough. 
you can yeah. spot the less confident chefs now, or perhaps less experienced, because I wouldn't want to knock people down. Mm. You know, lots of people create lots of delicious food. Yes. More recently, we've we've had the, the the increase of the commercial suppliers that grow the little micro herbs. Yes. Well, they've always been around. Mm. For me, when I look at the micros, I've got a taste, and they've actually got a taste of something because some of them don't. Yeah. But you can usually see when a chef's throwing a bit of red vein sorrel all over everything, and you're thinking, well, why have you? Why is the red vein sorrel going on there? Don't put it on there. It might mm. be the eighth, ninth, eleventh element going onto that dish. Yeah. Oh, well, I just thought a little bit of salad garnish will go well on there. Mm, yeah, but yeah. you need to. <laughs> yeah. Could you take three or four more things back off of yeah. there? Um, and and what you've created and cooked is still absolutely delicious. Mm. Um, and you see that a lot on Instagram. Yeah. You see that a lot. There are specific of those micros that are more readily available. Mm. They're the ones that turn up on all the dishes, rather than the concept of a dish. Yep that may well then have something that perfectly flavors with it and to go a level on from that obviously big influences now from all the food that we can gather in and around us amazingly lucky here mm. hopefully this project we can deliver further with here but there's all sorts of wild food all over the golf course yep um and there are sorrels and those sorts of things well in the right and the elderflower right now isn't it yeah um you know which is which is lovely with elderflower jam all those sorts of things delicious things but you know the concept of the dish if it works all together and when you're eating it, then you can create something a little bit more beautiful. Yeah. You can create a really amazing plate of food. And when you take a photo of it, you're like, why does that look so rubbish? Yeah. It looks amazing right there and I want to eat it. You need a professional, that's what you need. Ah, uh, is that right? <laughs> See, is that right? That's what you need. Yeah, I mean, most most restaurants, the angle that you look at it from, as you rightly say, when we send food across the pass, we will send it to the waiters or waitresses yeah and you know i want them to put the food down in front of them the way i have just plated it yeah that's really important nothing annoys me more where they touch the edge of the they touch the edge of the bowl and like, oh it's a bit hot and they spin it a little bit and put their hair around i'm like eh. i want that to go to them like that yes that's why we plated it like that if you're just going to spin it around and put it down anyway then yeah. they're not going to get the experience that we want them to have not that it's all about me but i want my bit as i explained earlier yeah. my bit when it goes out the door that's all I can do yeah. um, to the best of my ability. Yeah. Well, again, I understand that because, again, it's your, it's your signature. People are coming a lot of the time to eat because it's you, right? So They are, yeah. It's the kudos of the chef and in mm. the chef there and has the mm. chef plated this and has yeah. been part of the cooking process. People do like. And you do, I think, style-wise, it's difficult. People always ask me about food style. I find yeah. that really difficult to explain. Yep. I'm probably modern British. Mm. But my style is a combination of 20 years worth of working with different people who might not describe themselves as modern, modern British. Yep. And that includes me being in a pub environment where 50% of our food is burgers and fish and chips. Yep. Still want that to look nice, mm. you know, but it's with a bit of thought process behind it. Mm. You know, is that the right plate for a fish and chips to go on? Don't know. Is it or isn't it? Let's have a conversation about that. And if yeah. we've got the affordability, can we buy the right plate for that? I remember a guinea fowl dish. I loved it. Mm. Love guinea fowl. It was with some sort of lovagey mayonnaise as part of the sauce, so very green. Yep. Then we had some red, uh, pickled -y type of red onions mm. and some gnocchi and some boudin blanc. It was like a soft sort of white sausage. Um, mm. with all, and and that, those bits were all dotted around and the, the green element, the lovage, was left to go on and at the end. The okay. sauce was on the plate and then the mayonnaise went on. So when it went to them... Mm. The mayonnaise hadn't puddled and run into the sauce. And by the time they got it, just a, like a whirly, you know, yep. so they could see that we'd been very precise about how we'd plated that dinner. Mm. Um, interesting. Again, a technique that that I perhaps saw with one of my old head chefs who perhaps wasn't a messy plating chef, but one day had gone, actually, I've sort of thought about whether we can make a, you know, and we'd taken an element of protein and broken it up into five or six chunks. Yep. Those chunks were around the plate, you know, and the thought process with that is if you do that for somebody, yep. They can eat that chunk with all the bits and pieces you want them to eat with it because a plate of food is essentially designed to all go together. Yep. If you give them your protein and your carb and your veg all in one big pile, they've got to do that for themselves. And they might not. They might take their food and spread it all out and just eat the piece of potato on its own. And you're like, well, I wanted you to eat that bit of potato with yeah. that bit of veg because I think it'd be really nice. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, and ultimately dishes are designed it's, so it, it all gets you going mm. rather than, I don't know what you're your kiddies like at home but my kids mm. they want their food separate their palates just aren't <laughs> if i put the food together yeah. 
they split it all out on the plate. It's they'll eat funny. all their peas mm. and they'll eat all their whatever it is. And My wife does that. <laughs> and I'm like, why, what, why? why would you do that? I mean, obviously cooking at home is very different to cooking yeah. in a restaurant, but in a restaurant, I guarantee you a chef wants you to try all of it mm. together. Yeah. Um, because they they might be balancing stuff with sweet and sour and mm. salty, sugary, all those things that you need to get your taste buds flowing. Yeah. Good. Uh, brilliant, Nick. Thank you very it's much for taking part of that. That's great stuff. Talking about the actual plating, yeah. you can see we've Please. come off the bottom of the plate a little yeah. bit. We haven't gone completely flat. I could actually plate another one in a minute and do a different style of plating with it. That would be good. Do. Yeah. Um, but we've come, we, we've given it height, mm -hmm. you know, by creating a base down underneath of peas and beans. We've got our radish there. We've got contrasting shapes, yep. which is interesting visually to the eye. Mm -hmm. And then what we haven't done is muck that up too much with the rest of what we've put down on the plate. Yep. We haven't mucked that up by kind of throwing it and covering it all over the top of it. It would be very easy to take a big wedge of samphire and chuck it right on the top there. Yep. Now that'd be great for eating, yeah. but visually maybe not so much. Yeah. All right. As a, as a photographer, I'm like, please don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, please all right. Do that. Please don't do that. So yeah. that's that one. That's brilliant. Wow. Thank you so much for sticking with this video all the way through. And I hope you got some really good insights from Chef Nick. Kudos to you. And guess what? This was actually the first attempt at a video podcast. So how do you think it went? Are there any thoughts, suggestions that you'd like to make to improve it for the next one? Do you know what? I'm really excited to create more content like this. So any feedback or suggestions on future content would be really, really gratefully received. So let's keep the conversation going and improve together. Thank you so much for being part of this food loving community. So come on, grab a fork and get involved.